What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out awesome pro wrestling heel turns by uh damn it. What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out awesome pro wrestling heel turns by wrestling bios, man. Uh it's one of those things where sometimes a heel turn ultimately can enhance the wrestler's career we've seen it time and time and time and time and time again i think it's like a a rite of passage that once you turn heel it just enhances you overall for the most part in your career and from there you you know you're able to you know kind of get into more of your creative bag we've seen it with hbk we've seen it with roman reigns recently him turning heel was the best thing that happened to his career we've seen it with the rock same thing him turning heel was the best thing that happened to his career it was one of those things where once you do that and you're really good at it whenever you turn face again it's going to be you know the the fans are gonna love you same thing with hulk hogan hulk hogan was the ultimate baby face for so long and then you know people kind of got tired of it went to wcw once he turned heel and he was able to ride that wave of hate people started loving him people started cheering for him people started thinking he was cool that's just that's just what that's just what happens in wrestling it's so weird we love the bad guys we love to hate the bad guys and the baby faces Sometimes we care for them depending on the situation, but a lot of times it's just like we prefer a heel. So we're gonna check this out. This should be a good one. Appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. Let's get right into this. One. Back in late I don't know why it was all, all the way up here, but here we go. <laughs> Nothing beats a good old heel turn in pro wrestling. For sure. Turning to the dark side seems to get more people talking than a guy turning baby face. Just and said that's it. because heel turns are supposed to come across Tomasa as a Champions bit more another good one and too. a bit more unexpected. Sometimes it doesn't work, but a well-executed heel turn has the chance to live on forever as an unforgettable moment. Mm -hmm. Today I'm going to take a look at a few of my favorite heel turns. Some will be obvious, of course, because it would be a sin to leave off some of the more well-known turns. Yeah. But I'll also explain why the turn Seth well Rollins deserves and why to be there I too. I personally enjoyed them. So here are some of my favorite heel turns in pro wrestling. Classic one right here. This one falls into the obvious category, and it's one that's been talked about frequently, but that's for good reason. The Rockers tag team was a hit with younger fans and also female fans. Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty incorporated a lot of tandem high-flying offense into mm -hmm. their moveset that excited fans. They had a carefree attitude that people <laughs> outfits, gravitated man. towards, <laughs> and just their overall presentation, from their entrance music to their ring attires, told viewers that, hey, these guys like to have fun, and you're going to have fun watching them wrestle. All good things must come to an end, Always. and after some issues behind the scenes, and because Sean had his own desire to begin a singles run, the Rockers would break up in an infamous promo held in Brutus Beefcake's barber mm -hmm. shop. In infamous the run-up to this historic moment, the tag team were having some issues in the ring, and the WWF magazine even covered the potential breakup of Sean and Marty Jannetty. Marty said if Sean wants to make this work, he has to shake his hand and put their problems aside. Sean not only shook Marty's hand, but he gave him a big old hug and the fans popped. Just when everyone thought the <laughs> Rockers were back on track, Sean kicked Marty in the face and he proceeded to put Marty's head through the barbershop window. Sean kicks his former partner while he's down, he grabs the WWF magazine and he rips it in half. Sean had turned to the dark side and he'd go on to become the heartbreak. Facts. The rest is history. Yep. Leaving the Rockers was the best thing Sean mm -hmm. ever did in hindsight and as for Marty Jannetty, well, yeah, it wasn't so good for Marty. Nope. Oh, oh shit, man! I don't Bless owe me. you no explanation. I don't know you. Now this one is very controversial. It for the longest it really didn't work. If you really want to be honest, Stone Cold turning to the dark side to align with Vince McMahon, you thought it would work. Jr. was trying to sell it as much as he could, but if you watch WrestleMania 17, the crowd was still cheering. The crowd wanted Stone Cold to win. So it didn't really initially work. It didn't really start taking place, in my opinion, until he started to align himself with Triple, uh, with Triple H. And they became a two-man power trip. 
that's when I started to feel like the heel turn was somewhat working. But people still love Stone Cold. It was just it it it, it worked in a sense, but not really. You know, he was getting booze, but it, in my opinion, I think people still loved him too much. People are damn thing. Stone Cold said that this didn't work out too well, and many fans online agree with yeah. Austin, but I didn't think Austin's time as a heel after WrestleMania 17 was all that bad. I thought some of Austin's promos were great when he went back to the dark side following his match against The Rock, but I also understand why others wouldn't have liked it. Some would actually consider this as one of the worst heel turns in pro wrestling. Austin vs. Rock took place at WrestleMania, and Vince McMahon made an appearance towards the end of the bout. I fans can definitely were left see that. shocked when McMahon and Austin and joined forces to ensure Stone Cold left WrestleMania as WWF Champion. This one was made all the more noteworthy due to the history Vince and Austin had. It was through their rivalry that the Mr. McMahon character became truly prominent on weekly WWF mm -hmm. television, and seeing Stone Cold partner up with his boss like this felt a bit strange, but man, what a way to end WrestleMania. Great, Think about great it, WrestleMania. This heel turn closed what many consider to be the greatest WrestleMania of all time. The vast majority mm -hmm. of fans weren't ready to boo Stone Cold, though. It was always going to be a tough sell, seeing as fans had cheered a heel Austin back in late 96 and 97, mm -hmm. and it was those cheers that turned him naturally into a babyface. The WWF would have to edit pre-taped shows and add boos because fans were still giving Stone Cold positive reactions. And this is what I was saying. It, it, it worked. When he lined himself with Triple H, it, it kind of worked a little bit more, but it, it wasn't... They had to really force it and it's supposed to become natural he was just too big of a baby face people just cared about him too much to like truly hate him actions when he walked to the ring but again i found the heel turn interesting and entertaining and i enjoy heel steve austin just as much as baby face steve austin Hulk Hogan has oh, said this, said this at the beginning Set this Another at the beginning of the video, obvious man. one here, but one I can't leave out of this video. You, can't. you know the deal. One of the biggest baby faces of all time. Eat your vitamins, say your prayers. Yep. Hulk Hogan rose to the very top of the wrestling world by being a good guy, but all that happened in WWF. In WCW, depending on where the shows were being held, Hulk Hogan could get some pretty rough receptions, not only because he was an old WWF guy, but because he was doing the same Thanks. old thing that he had done for yeah, years people, and years. People got tired of it. wasn't totally totally broken in the summer of 1996 but it sure would have ended up that way if things continued the way they did so hogan took the opportunity to join forces with scott hall and kevin nash and well to say there was shock would be an understatement mm -hmm. hulk did toy around with the dark side the year prior and it was comically bad but nash and hall were the key to this heel turn mm -hmm. being successful the Outsiders invasion felt a lot more real than what Hogan had tried to do before. They gave this group an edge and a lot more legitimacy. So everything just fell into Look place at that, perfectly. Bro. Abash at the Throwing beach trash at him. And we ended up getting a true game-changing faction that's became just as legendary as WCW itself. The New World Order. The Hulk Hogan's heel turn's probably the most significant and noteworthy heel turn in pro wrestling history. Facts. Facts, facts, facts. Man, it's right here across the United States of America. The double time. I turn. apologize for nothing. Bret Hart's heel turn had been building up ever since around December 1996, I'd say. Shawn Michaels still had his fans, and Bret was tearing Shawn a new one frequently on TV, and in a way, it made Bret come off as a little better. Just a little. Steve Austin was also rising up the ranks as a popular anti-hero, and Austin was getting the better of Bret on a few occasions. While mm -hmm. Bret was eager to fight Austin and prove that the hitman was better than Stone Cold, he would also complain quite a lot whenever he got his hands on a microphone leading to some fans seeing Brett as a crybaby. Still though, what you have to remember here and what makes Brett's heel turn so good is the fact that Brett had a point and Brett was pretty much right. He mm -hmm. was getting screwed over by Austin and it did seem like Sean was dodging Brett when it came to a fight. Brett was the victim of a lot of injustice but Stone Cold's popularity just couldn't be denied and Brett would have to come to terms with a lot of his old fans dismissing the excellence of execution as their hero. Yeah. It all came to a head at WrestleMania 13 mm -hmm. where both Brett and Austin's roads were solidified in what many consider to be the greatest double turn of all time yep. but do keep in mind that both guys were already well on this path in the run up to Wrestlemania. The WWF did gamble a little on how fans would react but it turned out better than expected. 
Austin wouldn't submit to the sharpshooter and referee Ken Shamrock had to step in and end the WrestleMania 13 submission match. Brett, however, decided to attack Stone Cold after the bell, and when Shamrock took Brett down by force, the hitman backed down, getting a lot of booze in the process. Aust and that's good. That that I'm I'm in agreement. A lot of people say this is the greatest double turn in, in WrestleMania and just in wrestling history. I think it is. Stone Cold not tapping. Passing out blood, falling down his face, him passing out. Didn't win. He passed out. Brett infuriated, attacking him after it's over. It was great. This is this is how you you really solidify someone's character. And now people want to see Stone Cold win the championship because he never gave up. Austin, meanwhile, showed true grit when he wouldn't submit to Brett's mm -hmm, finisher, said it. instead losing consciousness while locked in the sharpshooter but still never giving up. Stone Cold also refused help when getting out of the ring, preferring to walk back up the ramp by himself and getting a standing ovation in the process. That's Brett how would you explain do it. his actions the next night on Raw, and again, Brett told no lies and everything he said was true. He talked about all the times he'd been messed around in WWF since returning at the 1996 Survivor Series, and the hitman kept it all off by saying, it seems like a lot of fans in America don't care about him anymore. But the fact of the matter is, Brett really doesn't care too much about the American fans neither. Mm, love it. Love it. You need to feel my oh, Kane, this, this is the version it's a of Kane. Of I appreciate one here, and <laughs> I think it's an example of WWE turning a negative into a positive. When the decision was made to remove Kane's mask, WWE had a bit of a problem. They had mm -hmm. told fans for the longest time that Kane's face was disfigured. You've got two options here really, if the mask was definitely going to come off, you could apply makeup every single time Kane performed, including house shows, and that would have been extremely difficult to do. Yeah. Or you could just do nothing and let Kane go out there with a face that wasn't disfigured and try to explain your way out of it. The WWE went with the latter option and they decided a heel turn would also be necessary. Yeah. So when Kane was forced to remove his mask on Raw, a storyline was built around Kane's mental state that was actually pretty well done all things considered Kane was mentally disfigured he had hidden behind the mask out of fear that people wouldn't accept him and in doing this he and then he would make a roll himself that his face was a mess when it was pointed out to Kane that there was nothing wrong with how he looks he would think that people were downplaying the severity of his illness he just went roll I love it he would once again solidify Kane as and a of course slow chemical uh became his uh his theme song oh man if you know me, you know how much I love Slow Chemical. It just it fit him perfectly. Oh, man. Hail. Jim Ross tried to show Kane Set empathy, him on but fire. Kane was <laughs> having none of it. He would end up setting good old JR on fire when Ross questioned his perceived disfigurement, and Kane would go on a rampage soon oh afterwards God, where he was good. reborn as a monster oh, in WWE, so good. something he hadn't been for quite a few years. Personally speaking, I prefer the old original Kane, but the removal of Kane's mask I thought was handled very well, and reverting Kane back to being an intimidating and unstoppable force in WWE was a good call. It gave the character many, many more years in the company. Facts. Before they turned him into uh, the devil's favorite bitch <laughs> for the authority. <laughs> a plan B. This is... Really I'm not good. Sure if it was just me that thought this, but when the Shield was getting heavily featured in WWE, I sometimes felt that Seth Rollins didn't get as much recognition as Roman mm -hmm. Reigns and Dean Ambrose. Roman was always given a little more than the other guys, being a big powerhouse that the WWE took a liking to, mm -hmm. and Ambrose managed to get himself highlighted due to how unpredictable and unstable he could be from time to time in the ring. Seth Rollins was given the name The Architect, the guy who puts it all together away from the ring, the planner of the group, the guy who gives the shield their tactical edge, the man who comes up with the blueprints. So you've got the powerhouse, the chaotic brawler, and the high-flying technician. In my opinion, Seth was the most naturally talented in-ring competitor of the trio. Much agreed. Yet it felt to me that more people would talk about his Shane teammates. And hey, yeah. I could be totally wrong here, but that's how I remember it. So Honestly, uh, I think he's spot on. If you guys remember around that time, people were really high on Roman Reigns. People loved how Dean Ambrose was coming off on the microphone and just his antics. And people appreciated Seth. But people didn't think Seth was, I guess you could say, I think people would have, people were choosing Roman, 
Dean, then Seth. And it's crazy how how even though all three of their careers have definitely flourished, these guys are they. I, I will say this: WWE at the time they knew they were the future, and they 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 they're, they're proving it. They're proving it right now. They have been everything that they've been built up to be. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's crazy to see that Seth Rollins, in the uh the popular opinion, he was like the lesser of everyone else. Even though they were all you know pretty fantastic in the ring, Seth Rollins, in my opinion, is the the most most giftedly talented and. It's just crazy how things played out over time, man. Still, though, the trio would become very popular in WWE, but it was Seth who would destroy the shield when he famously became Triple H's plan B. This Seth is so hit good. Roman with a steel chair, and so Ambrose good. couldn't believe what he was seeing. So Dean got taken out too, and Seth would join Triple H in the authority while also becoming one of the biggest heels WWE this has to so offer. so good. It's a heel turn that would get replayed often, and no one saw it coming. It turned out to be highly beneficial to Seth in terms of his position in the company mm -hmm. but in saying that every member of the shield would prosper in one way or another yeah. a good heel turn though and it created a singles main eventer in just one night facts 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 all factual the rock never sold out told you the rock just got a hand the Rock's 1998 Heel Turn Series was so good because it really was so unexpected. Rock was on the path to becoming one of WWF's top heavy faces alongside Steve Austin, and everything pointed to Rocky becoming a big time fan favorite at the end of the year. Survivor Series 1998 featured the Deadly Game Tournament. The winner of the tournament would become the new WWF champion. And in the finals, Rock would become champion for the first time in his career, but he also got a little assistance from Vince McMahon. Mm -hmm. A reenactment of the Montreal Screwjob to place and Vince ordered the timekeeper to ring the bell when Rock put Mankind in the sharpshooter. Keep in mind that Mankind thought he was in Vince's good books when all this went down. Fans had wanted to cheer for Rocky, but all that was taken away when the people's champion became the corporate champion. Yeah, corporate I think champ. this is an interesting one because it bucked tradition. You knew The Rock was going to become a huge babyface star because fans couldn't get enough of him during yeah. this time period. But the WWF pulled off a great swerve at Survivor Series 1998 and the heel turn ended up being a lot of fun because, well, they got us. They got us good. Yeah. All this would set up a WrestleMania match featuring Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin, beginning a WrestleMania a trilogy that will go down in history yep. is one of the WWE's best. Yeah, I'm sorry. It, it's it's without a doubt <laughs> the best trilogy of matches to like to ever happen at WrestleMania, bro. Best trilogy of matches. There's no, there's no Rock Stone Cold. I'm telling you right now, The Rock and Stone Cold could happen one more time, and I'm telling you now, everybody and their grandmother would be wanting to watch that match. There'll be people who haven't watched wrestling in years. Rock and Stone Cold going at it one more time? Sign me the fuck up. I would be hyped. <laughs> I know it shouldn't be the main event, but I would be hyped because that's just how legendary they careers were. Because I didn't get a chance to win All the title heart. because of you. That's a good one. But I can count on myself. Legendary heel turn. It's remembered for Owen's little verbal slip up at the end, unfortunately. But Owen turning his back on bread at the 1994 Royal uh -huh. Rumble will always be memorable to me because as a kid, I remember feeling really bad for Brett. The Hart brothers had a few issues when little brother Owen got eliminated in a Survivor Series match that featured the Hart family taking on Shawn Michaels and the Knights, originally supposed to be Jerry Lawler and the Knights. Over the holiday season, it was revealed that the Hearts had put their differences aside and Owen was back on track. The Hitman and his little bro were going to try to win the Tag Team Championships at the 1994 Royal Rumble when they took on the Quebecers. Brett hurt his knee during the match and he tried to persevere. He was unable to apply a sharpshooter though and he could stand up. The referee decided to stop the match and award the victory to Jacques and Pierre. Owen yelled at Brett for not tagging out and then Owen attacked his older brother. That's it was good. so well put together too because Owen cut a promo on Brett that was aired on the big screens as the hitman was being helped to the back. Owen was rubbing salt in the wounds by berating his brother while he clearly needed medical attention. But then Owen has his little slip up when he says he kicked Brett's leg out of his leg and that line kind of overshadows the whole <laughs> Still, this is one that resonated with me when I was younger, and it's pretty fun to go back 
fucking watching That's now. Funny. Owen and Brett would collide at WrestleMania 10, and Owen was able to beat his big brother on the WWF's biggest stage. That's how you do it, man. That is how you do it. Create some good heel heat. He's sick and tired of you and what you stand for. A lot of hearts were broken when Andre the Jan showed up to Piper's Pit on the 7th of February 1987 with Bobby Heenan. In order to build up their legendary WrestleMania 3 match, Hogan and Andre were guests on Piper's talk show segment and if you put yourself back in that time period, and if you remember the influence Hogan had as a babyface then you might be able to appreciate the emotion of this heel turn. Mm -hmm. Hulk Hogan was already on set and when Andre walked out with Heenan, the Hulkster was in complete disbelief. Putting Bobby Heenan with Andre though was a stroke of genius because Heenan was the mouthpiece of the mm -hmm. WWF at the time, that so makes the sense. brain speaking on behalf of Andre. My man looked like he was sweating Andre. <laughs> it looked like he was a few sweating weeks buckets. Earlier, Hogan was presented with a trophy to commemorate three years since the Hulkster won the WWF Championship. Andre made an appearance during Hogan's speech. He said three years is a long time to be champion, and he gave Hulk a very firm handshake that threw Hogan off a little. Back in the primetime studio, Bobby Heenan wanted to know where Andre's trophy was and Gorilla Monsoon said Andre's had plenty of accolades throughout his career. So the following week, WWF gave Andre a trophy, a smaller trophy as pointed out by Bobby Heenan, mm. but Hulk Hogan would come out and Hogan more or less steals Andre's spotlight, not intentionally mind you. Hogan wouldn't stop talking about how great it was that WWF gave Andre a trophy, but the big man didn't want to hear it and Andre walked away. The following week, both trophies were brought to Piper's Damn. And Ventura pointed out the size difference in the trophies while saying that Hulk Hogan's went out of his way to dodge certain challengers, challengers like Andre the Giant. So Ventura says that he's going to bring Andre to Piper's Pit the following week while Piper says that he'll get Hogan. Andre walks out the next week with Heenan, Hogan's in pure shock and he pours his red and yellow heart out to Andre. Hogan can't believe the giant would side with Bobby Heenan, a man who's caused nothing but problems for Hulk and all the Hulkamaniacs. Andre <laughs> was the reason Hogan wanted to become a wrestler, he's Hogan's role model, and to see him with Bobby Heenan is tearing Hogan apart. Heenan says that Hogan used Andre throughout his career, all Andre got was a small trophy, and even then Hogan got jealous so he had to to run out and steal Andre's spotlight. Not once did Hulk Hogan ever give Andre a title shot, and Andre's mm. gonna challenge Hogan to a WrestleMania match right here on Piper's Pit. Hogan says he and Andre are friends. Andre tells Hogan to get his hands off his shoulders, and then Andre makes the challenge official before ripping the shirt off Hogan's back and ripping the cross off that Hogan wears around his Damn. neck. Hogan bleeds here. It was totally unintentional, but it added a lot to the promo. And it's Roddy Piper who has to console Hulk and get him back on his feet. Damn, they set this up good. One that worked very, very well. They set this up real good. <laughs> that was really good setup. <laughs> Oh, oh, Triple H, you son of a bitch. Oh, this was so good. One of my favorite blood feuds of all time. Triple H, HBK. HBK coming back after years of, you know, being retired, coming back. You had the DX reunion and Triple H turning on him was so chef's kiss fantastic. <laughs> Hunter's turned heel a few times in this, his career, but the one good. that pissed me off the most was when he turned on Shawn Michaels. This is so good! Being a big fan of 1997 WWF, I was very excited when D-Generation X were set to make mm -hmm. their return in the summer of 2002. Me too. Triple H had made a triumphant return to WWE at the beginning of the year while Shawn Michaels returned as part of the NWO. When the NWO angle fell apart, Triple H and Shawn Michaels decided to realign with each other. On the July 22nd, 2002 episode of Raw, HBK was down and out after Eric Bischoff told him he had to be Triple H's manager or he can leave WWE. Shawn said he was gonna leave, Triple H had to talk him out of it. And a little later on, Triple H gave Shawn a shirt to wear because the two were gonna go down to the ring and cut a promo. The DX theme music plays oh in the arena God. and the crowd goes crazy. And the game and the Heartbreak Kid turn back the clock by bringing D Generation X back to the world of wrestling. I fell for this hook, yep. line, and sinker, by the way. Yep, I, I had no idea what I was got coming. Okey John dope, said bro. just when you thought it was safe to put on the old Groplin show, DX are back in town. Triple H takes the mic and he goes through his Are You Ready routine. He finishes up and then he kicks HBK and oh hits him with God. a thunderous pedigree. 
D-Generation X would not reunite oh, on this, this evening. So As a matter good. of fact, fans would have to wait another four years before mm -hmm. DX got back together. But this would all lead to Shawn Michaels returning to in-ring action at SummerSlam 2002. Oh yeah, before that happened, Triple H tried to swerve everyone again by showing concern when Shawn was attacked backstage. He promised to find out who did it and this make whoever so did it pay for their crimes. But it turned out to be Triple H himself who jumped his old friend. Fantastic. Oh man, some of, that was easy. I still those bro that feud lasted for a good few years, bro. Like I would say, like two years, two almost three years. That feud was off and on. It was so good, bro. Take me back, take me back. Those eyes right there, Randy those Savage. Eyes lost Elizabeth. This one was so memorable because it was done in such a way that was actually pretty believable. Randy Savage's 1989 heel turn was all about Macho's own insecurities and Macho's inability to control both his jealousy and his temper. He and Hulk Hogan had created a successful tag team known as the Megapars, and the Megapars were insanely popular with younger audiences. They were truly a babyface dream team that featured two of the very best mm. the WWF had to offer at the time, but the Megapars would explode in dramatic fashion and this would all lead to a big WrestleMania main event where it could be argued the build up was actually better than the match itself. Randy thought that Hulk Hogan was getting a little too friendly with Miss Elizabeth and he was picking up on a few things that Randy felt went beyond a professional relationship. The heat mm. turn took place on the February 3rd 1989 episode of the main event. The Megapars wrestled Akeem and the big boss man. Savage bumped into Liz, Liz got knocked oh, out damn. and Hulk Hogan decided to stop the match and carry Liz away to get medical attention. The macho man was left all on his own to fight two men while Hogan seemed way more interested in Miss Elizabeth. Liz told Hogan to go back and help Randy, but Randy was so angry with Hogan that he decided to slap him in the face instead and walk away from the match. Hogan of course defeated Akeem and the big boss man single handedly, <laughs> but he hurried back to check on Miss Elizabeth. Randy was already there giving Liz a hard time and then the macho man let it all out. He accused Hogan of trying to steal Miss Elizabeth away from him, he felt like he was taking a back seat in the mega powers, and when Hogan told Liz to talk some sense into Randy, the macho man oh! launched an attack and Savage turned heel. The partnership was over, the feud had begun, and as mentioned, this would culminate in a WrestleMania match that, of course, Hulk Hogan won. Yeah, Many would say that Randy was justified in turning heel, and it was actually Hulk Hogan who was the villain in all this. Yeah, the key it trait looks being like that. a good heel is that that heel has to believe that they're in the right, and by all accounts, Randy had good reason to be annoyed. But yeah. this would turn out to be another very memorable turn, and it was one of the better storylines WWF produced in the late 80s. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's going to do it for this one. Now, this and was a good I list, man. I had a lot of fun going back and watching these heel turns. This was a very good footage. list. So yeah, I had a good time with this. Let me know some of your favorite heel turns. And also, as a challenge, maybe let me know some of your favorite babyface turns too. We talk a lot about good guys turning into villains, but for many babyface turns, it can be quite difficult sometimes to pinpoint the exact moment when the turn happened. Mm -hmm. Usually, it's more of a natural progression or a slow build over yep. time due to fan support. But if there's any that stuck out for you, let me know in the comments. I'm sure a Heal the Babyface video will oh, get released eventually. Classic moment right there. I hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you for watching. Only turn heel if you really need to. And take <laughs> care. Nah, this was a good one, man. This was this was definitely fantastic. Um, I love me a good heel turn. A good heel turn, like I said at the beginning of this video, it can ultimately catapult a wrestler's career to newer heights because now they're not restricted by being a good person they can actually go as rogue as they want do whatever the hell they want and a lot of times if they do it right you can get people to hate you that's what you want you want people to hate you that's how you really get under their skin because when they hate you they ultimately love you they, they will pay money to see you get beat up but they ultimately still appreciate what you do, man. So comment down below. Let me know what is your favorite heel turn of all time. If I really have to think about this, favorite heel turn of all time for me, it's, it's been so many good ones, bro. So many good ones. For me, it, it's probably Triple H's. Triple H's, his heel turn was so good against HBK, Shawn Michaels. And once again, Shawn just came back. 
and then they teased DX, that whole thing, like he said, it got me. I was hooked. I was like, oh, man, we getting DX back? And then he turned on him. And it wasn't just that he turned on him. My man was trying to end HBK's career. He was trying to end his career. All oh, this shit was so good. It was so personal. It felt so real. I loved it. I love it. made me hate Triple H. I mean, hate him, bro. Oh, it was so damn good. That's one of my favorite heel turns of all time. Even though Triple H was definitely, you know, healed throughout his uh, most of his career for, you know, a lot of bits. But it was just him turning on Sean. That was so good. You know, so you thought they were going to be baby faces together. Thought it was going to work. Nah, it didn't go that way. And then another good one, obviously, Seth Rollins. And a, a recent one is Roman Reigns. Those are like, if I had to get like a top three, Seth Rollins was really good. Roman Reigns was fantastic as well. So, but comment down below. Let me know your favorite heel turn of all time. But I appreciate all love and support. Road to 150K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one.